action to be taken soon against IP televisions being operated throughout without following rules and regulations, says Information and Broadcasting Minister Dr. Mahmoud. Member of Parliament from Kumila 7 constituency, former Deputy Speaker and Felian Freedom Fighter Professor Mohammad Ali Ashraf passes away. Flash floods kill at least 60 people in Afghanistan, including women and children. And China and Japan fighting for top spot in medal tally at Tokyo Olympics. Assalamu alaikum. This is News at 10 on BTV, BTV World and BTV Chattogram Center. I'm Annie Cambry. Those were the highlights. Now the details. All export-oriented industries, factories and plants are to go to operational from the 1st of August, maintaining health guidelines to keep the country's economy running and allow people to earn a living. Cabinet Division issued a Gazette today with the announcement to this effect. The Gazette said, considering the overall situation, all export-oriented industries, factories and plants will stay out of the ongoing restrictions from 6 in the morning of 1st August. It may be mentioned that all of the country's industries have remained closed since July 23 as strict restrictions were imposed. Bangladesh reported 212 COVID-19 deaths today and 13,862 new infections in the last 24 hours. Director General of Health Services DGHS in its routine daily statement today said the death toll has risen to 20,467 from coronavirus and the tally of infections has risen to 12 lakh 40,115. The recovery count rose to 10 lakh 64,195 after another 13,975 patients recovered. The statement said 30.77% of 45,044 samples tested positive. DGHS statistics showed of people infected from the beginning 85.81% recovered and 1.65% died. The statement said of the 212 deaths, one is between 10 to 20 years, five are between 21 to 30 years, 15 are between 31 to 40 years, 25 are between 41 to 50 years, 48 are between 51 to 60 years, 69 are between 61 to 70 years, 32 are between 71 to 80 years, 11 are between 81 to 90 years, 6 are between 90 to 100 years. 11, 119 out of the 212 people died were male, while 93 were female. DGHS informed that 65 people died in Dhaka Division, 53 died in Chotogram Division, 13 died in Rajshahi Division, 36 died in Khulna Division, 11 died in Borishal Division, 17 died in Silla Division, 9 died in Rangpur Division and 8 died in Mamasingh Division. The number of dengue patients is increasing day by day in the capital. Experts think that dengue situation is alarming due to COVID-19 pandemic. They feared that in the mid-August dengue could increase. For this reason, experts have suggested to treat dengue patients in separate wards at various hospitals. Pressure of dengue patients has increased at Midford Hospital as most of the hospitals in the capital have been turned into COVID dedicated. Doctors of the Midford Hospital are facing serious problems to manage the large number of dengue patients. They suggested the dengue patients to take medicines at home unless patients' physical conditions is critical. Experts have suggested to clean every house to prevent dengue infection and increase dengue bed numbers at private hospitals. As part of 14-day lockdown across the country capital, Dhaka is also under the strict lockdown for the 8th day today.
It may be mentioned that the government has reimposed the lockdown to check the coronavirus, especially the Delta variant infection. Though local and long routed bus services remain suspended totally, but the sufficient number of private car, rickshaw and motorcycle plied at the Gaptoli bus terminal areas. Some local people were also seen walking on the roads to their destinations because of non-availability of public transports. Lanes and bylanes uh, were comparatively free since the morning due to holiday today. All super shops and shopping malls remained closed, but only the vegetable markets were opened. Meanwhile, members of law enforcing agencies of Army, RAB, BGB police and ANSA battalions are on strict vigil to implement the lockdown program declared by the government in the capital city. Awami League General Secretary Badul Qadir has called upon party leaders and countrymen to follow proper health guidelines while organizing programs in the month of August. He made the call in a statement today. Obadul Qadir said August 15 is not just a day of mourning for the Bengali nation but also a day to accumulate the strength of the Bengali nation. He said Bangabandhu's daughter Sheikh Hasina has transformed the grief of the entire nation into strength today through ideological struggle and efficient leadership. Information and Broadcasting Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud has said actions will be taken soon against the IP televisions running, ignoring rules and regulations. He said this at a press briefing at his official residence today. The Information Minister says some IP televisions will be given registrations after scrutiny. Responding to a query from journalists on Joy Yatra IP TV's owner Helen Jahangir, the minister says it needs to be careful about those who got into different committees by using loopholes. IP TV journal, our online portal, we have requested to open the registration journal. Among the past few requests for the IP TV registration journal, our schedule is that we have done a lot of good things. তা আমরা খুব সহসা যেগুলো ভালো আইপি টিভি সেগুলো রেজিস্ট্রেশন আমরা দিব তবে কিছু আইপি টিভি আছে যারা আসলে অনেক সময় গুজব প্রটানোর ক্ষেত্রে যুক্ত হয় এবং অনেক অসত্য নিউজ পরিবেশন করে এবং ভাড়ামো হয় এগুলোর মাধ্যমে এবং কিছু কিছু আইপি টিভি দেখা যায় যে একেবারে টেলিভিশন চ্যানেলের মতো তারা অফিস খুলে বসেছেন অনুমোদন পাওয়ার আগেই অনেকগুলো আইপি টিভি কেউ কেউ দেখা যাচ্ছে যে তারা জেলা প্রতিনিধি নিয়োগ করে সুতরাং এটির মধ্যে একটি নিয়ম নীতি একটি নিয়মের মধ্যে আনা প্রয়োজন এবং এইভাবে সারা দেশ জুড়ে ব্যাংকের ছাতার মতো এই ধরনের আইপি টিভি খুলে যার যেমন ইচ্ছা তেমন করবে এটি তো কখনো আইনসম্মত নয় এবং বাঞ্ছনীয় নয় আমরা এই জন্য কিছু আইপি টিভি যেগুলো ভালো সেগুলোকে আমরা অনুমোদন দিব আর যেগুলো বিরুদ্ধে নানা ধরনের অভিযোগ আছে তাদের বিরুদ্ধে ব্যবস্থা গ্রহণ করা হবে খুব সহসা যারা নানা প্রক্রিয়ায় ফাঁক ফোকড় দিয়ে আওয়ামী লীগের উপকমিটিতে ঢুকেছে এটি কখনো সমীচীন হয়নি এবং এই ধরনের ব্যক্তিবর্গকে কমিটিতে রাখার ক্ষেত্রে আরও অনেক সতর্কতা অবলম্বন করা দরকার ছিল এবং যারা সুপারিশ করেছেন তাদের একটু জেনে শুনে সুপারিশ করার প্রয়োজন ছিল তো তার বিরুদ্ধে ব্যবস্থা গ্রহণ করা হয়েছে এবং তিনি যেই আইপি টিভি চালান সেটির বিরুদ্ধে নানা কথা আছে আমরা তদন্ত করে দেখব যদি অভিযোগগুলো প্রমাণিত হয় তাহলে অবশ্যই ব্যবস্থা নেওয়া হবে Berlin Freedom Fighter, former Deputy Speaker and Member of Parliament from Komila 7 constituency, Professor Muhammad Ali Ashraf passed away today while undergoing treatment at a hospital in Dhaka. He was 73. He was suffering from different ailments including pneumonia and kidney disease. He was kept on life support in the hospital since July 23 as his condition deteriorated. He was admitted to the hospital on July 2 with different complications and taken to intensive care unit there only July 9. 
Muhammad Ali Ashraf was elected lawmaker for five times from Kumilla. He was elected an MP in the country's first parliamentary elections in 1973 from Kumilla 11 constituency. Later, he was elected MP from Kumilla 7 constituency in 1996, 2008, 2014 and 2018 general elections. Mohammad Ashraf was elected Deputy Speaker of the 7th Jati Shangshod in 2001. Meanwhile, President Mohammad Abdul Hamid and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina today expressed deep shock and sorrow at the death of Member of the Parliament, former Deputy Speaker and valiant freedom fighter Professor Mohammad Ali Ashraf. In separate messages of condolence, the President and Prime Minister said the nation lost a valiant freedom fighter, a veteran politician, a true soldier of the ideology of father of the nation, Bongo Bundu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, and a patriotic people's leader. The President and Prime Minister prayed for eternal peace of the departed soul and conveyed deep sympathy to the bereaved family. Now, international news. The World Health Organization, WHO, has announced that the COVID-19 Delta variant is now in 132 countries. The Delta variant is among the four COVID-19 mutations that WHO has designated variants of concern. Others are Alpha variant, which is present in 182 countries, Beta in 131 and Gamma in 81 and after reaching eight new countries in the past week. Latest data from WHO showed a substantial upstick in the Americas and the Western Pacific. This jumped 30% and 25% respectively. Meanwhile, COVID-19 global death toll climbed to 42,18,000 and total corona case tally rose to more than 19 crore, 75,70,000. The United States has now over 3 crore 55,84,000 confirmed cases and over 6,28,000 deaths. The death toll in India climbed to over 4,23,000 and the total tally of COVID-19 cases is over 3 crore 15,72,000. People in a remote part of eastern Pakistan were buried under mud and debris when heavy rain brought flash floods during the night. Children and women are said to be among the victims in Kamdesh, with at least 60 people dead and dozens more missing and many homes destroyed. Uh, the disaster zone is held by Taliban group fighting the government. Talks are being held to try to let rescue teams enter the area which is hard to reach in normal times. Afghan officials gave it a toll of 60 but the Taliban say, says uh, 150 people died in the flooding. Three people were found dead as a forest fire burned in southern Turkey yesterday. The country's Afad Disaster Agency and the Agricultural Minister said. Efforts to rescue others and extinguish the blaze continued after more than 100 people were evacuated, required medical treatment or suffered property damage. Television footage showed burnt buildings and people fleeing across fields as firefighters backed by helicopters battled blazes that were in some cases near tourist destinations. Hot weather and strong winds caused fires to spread around the town of Mana, Manavgat, 75 kilometers east of the resort city of Anatalia and nearby villages. Bangladesh Bank has announced the monetary policy with the, with the target of doubling the credit flow to the private sector for the next one year. Announcing the monetary policy yesterday, the central bank said it would help bring momentum to salvage the economy during the coronavirus pandemic. Bangladesh Bank has an aim to disburse Taka 176,000 crore to the private sector. As per the monetary policy, private sector credit growth remains unchanged at 14.8%. The policy has given special focus on farm, SME and export-oriented farms. 
now news on Tokyo Olympic Games. China topped the medal table as they won 19 gold, 10 silver and 11 bronze medal at the end of the seventh day of Tokyo Olympic Games. Host Japan is in the second position of the table as they bagged 17 gold, 4 silver and 10 bronze. United States of America got 14 gold, 16 silver and 11 bronze and stayed in the third position. Russian Olympic Committee ROC is in the 14th, fourth position of the medal tally while they earned 10 gold, 14 silver and 10 bronze medals. Turn the bulletin headlines once again. All export-oriented industries and factories to remain open from 1st August, maintaining health rules to keep countries' economy running and to ensure people's livelihood. 212 deaths from coronavirus with 13,862 new infections in last 24 hours, infection rate 30.77%. Number of dengue patients rising in the capital, experts emphasize on mosquito eradication and cleanliness for dengue prevention. Action to be taken soon against IP televisions being operated without following rules and regulations, says Information and Broadcasting Minister Dr. Mahmoud. <music> Member of Parliament from Komila 7 constituency, former Deputy Speaker and Valiant Freedom Fighter Professor Mohamed Ali Ashraf passes away. <music> Flash flood kills at least 60 people in Afghanistan, including women and children. And China and Japan fighting for top spot in medal tally at Tokyo Olympics. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us and we invite you to watch our next bulletin that's coming up at 11.30. We request you all to wear masks and stay away from Corona. Allah Hafiz.